The second lesson in Implants 101 is about abutments. We're going to help you understand the types of abutments and understand the indications for different types of abutments. Literally, there are hundreds of abutment choices with each system. Every implant company has multiple ways to put something on top of their implant, and it probably is one of the most confusing things that the restorative dentist has to face when they're doing implant restorative dentistry. There are different shapes and sizes. There are different indications. They're straight, they're angled, they're stock, they're preppable. So how do you make that choice? We're gonna sort through all of these and hopefully make this less confusing. Let's think about different categories. We know that there are tissue level implant restorations and bone level implant restorations. And there's a difference between the two. So one of the things that we need to understand is that in the tissue level implant restoration, there is an intimate connection to the platform of the implant. Either the crown fits directly over the top of that implant platform, or the implant abutment fits directly over the top of that implant platform. Notice in the photographs, there's a tissue level implant analog in a model. And then you can see a photograph of the crown. That crown has a metal abutment that has been uh, attached to it that fits directly on top of the implant platform. So that entire collar, that silver collar on the tissue level abutment is covered by the restoration. Bone level implant restorations are different in that the, the restoration has an intimate connection to the platform of the abutment not the implant. The abutment goes into the interior of the implant, which is sometimes called platform switching. It allows for much better bone retention. It helps us avoid what's called uh, micro gap and allows for better emergence profile as the abutment comes out of the platform. So in the first radiograph, you'll notice that the abutment is screwed into the implant. It's shaped much like a tooth preparation would be shaped. You can see the margin. The crown is then bonded or cemented to that implant abutment, much like you would bond or cement a crown to a natural tooth. So there is no connection of the final restoration to the implant. There are four kinds of abutments that we need to think about. There are cementable and screw retained. In cementable abutments, the restoration is cemented or bonded to the abutment, just like you would a conventional crown to a tooth. Um, most commonly, uh, we use a cementable abutment for a single or sometimes one, two, or three units that aren't splinted together. Sometimes they're used for bridges. Screw-retained abutments have a restoration that's fabricated so that it is screwed into the implant. There's a hole through the restoration that must be filled, usually with composite, so that it blends with the restoration. It's used most frequently to avoid cementing because we're learning recently, in the past few years, that cement around implants is a primary cause of periimplantitis. Screw-retained abutments are also used in hybrid restorations or in um, bar-retained overdentures. Two other categories of abutments are stock abutments and custom abutments. Stock abutments are prefabricated abutments that screw into the implant and allow what's called an abutment level impression, meaning that the abutment goes into the implant permanently at the time the restorative dentist places it. This is probably the simplest kind of abutment to use. However, it does require making sure that you have adequate restorative space before you place the abutment in the implant. Custom abutments are either milled or waxed and cast so that they are, they're fabricated specifically to a given patient. They'll fit a model of an, uh, an implant from the mouth, just as you would a conventional crown impression, or perhaps from a scanned impression if you're using in-office milling or in-office scanning. So let's look at each of these categories. Cementable stock abutments for tissue level implants look something like this. There are three different kinds. There's a straight abutment. 
screws directly into the implant, great for posterior um, restorations where the implant is appropriately placed. There's an angled abutment that changes the direction of the abutment relative to the placement of the implant. So if you have an implant that's placed a little too far buccal, a little too far lingual, you can place an angled abutment that allows the, the restoration to be fabricated more appropriately. The third type of stock abutment is a preppable abutment. The abutment is screwed into the implant or into an implant analog. An analog is a replica of the implant. And then that titanium abutment is actually prepped to fit the, the uh, circumstances of that individual tooth. Bone level implants also have stock abutments. They're straight and angled, and they, they come in both titanium and zirconia. There's also a preppable abutment for bone level implants. We seldom use stock abutments in bone level implants. One of the great advantages of the bone level implant is that it allows us to customize the abutment to most appropriately fit the tissue profile and the circumstances that that patient brings to us. Using a stock abutment on a bone level implant makes it very difficult to get optimal results. When we're thinking about bridges or fixed, there are also cementable abutments. They have a little bit different configuration. The, the abutments on the screen are for uh, tissue level implants. Now remember, these abutments go down and completely cover the platform of the implant. So the restoration is then cemented on top of these abutments. There's also a preppable abutment for bridges. Um, works the same as for single restorations. And for bone level implants with bridges or short span fixed uh, appliances, there are also a series of, of cementable abutments, stock abutments, that are the same as for single restorations, straight, angled, and preppable. And they're also available in, zir in zirconia. Let's talk about custom abutments that are cementable. Custom abutments are those that are either milled or waxed so that they mimic a tooth preparation. They help us optimize emergence profile, they help us better manage tissue because those abutments can be milled or waxed and cast to fit the exact tissue profile that we as the restorative dentist help establish with healing abutments. The image on the screen is a variobase abutment for bone level implants. Now, the system that we're showing here is a Straumann system, and we're I'm doing that because it happens to be the system that I'm most familiar with, most comfortable with, and have used for the past 15 years. Other systems may have different names for similar kinds of abutments. In this particular case, this variobase abutment has a specific shape so that the laboratory can mill what's called a chimney, or the part of the abutment that looks like the tooth preparation. That milled chimney is then cemented to the variobase abutment. The crown is then fabricated to that milled chimney. So the abutment is screwed into the implant. It looks like a tooth preparation. The crown is milled to fit um, the abutment and then is cemented to place. The image on the screen shows a CAD CAM rendering of the chimney that is cemented onto the abutment. That abutment then is removed from the implant analog and screwed into the patient's mouth. The crown is fabricated at the same time as the chimney is fabricated and then is bonded or cemented to that abutment. There's also a variobase for tissue level implants. If you look at the image, you'll see the broad platform at the bottom of that abutment. abutment. Remember, it's going to completely cover the tissue level platform. This, this abutment works the same as the bone level abutment. The chimney is milled to fit the top of the abutment. It's cemented in place. The crown is then milled or pressed, waxed and pressed so that it fits uh, the chimney and then cemented in place in the same way as the bone level. 
The UCLA abutment is a custom abutment that allows a metal abutment to be waxed and then cast. The bottom of the abutment is a gold coping so that you can cast a semi-precious metal to this gold coping. The white top part is a waxing sleeve. It allows the screw access to be left open. These are examples of UCLA abutments on top of bone level implants. Screw retained crowns and bridges have abutments that work the same way as the cementable custom abutments. The difference here is instead of fabricating a chimney that's cemented to the abutment, the crown and sometimes the bridge is milled to fit directly on the abutment and then cemented to those abutments. There's a hole through the center of the restoration that allows access to place the screw. That hole then is filled with composite. They can be used both for tissue level and for bone level implants. It's the same abutment essentially. Here's an example of some posterior single units that are going to be screw retained. You can see the opening through the center of the crown where the screw will go, and that opening will then be filled with composite. There are other types of abutments for screw retained restorations. When we're using multiple implants for something like a bar retained overdenture or a hybrid or a multiple unit bridge, Sometimes the placement of the implants doesn't allow a path of insertion. So the abutments that are placed on top of those implants need to be angled in order to create that path of insertion. The images on your screen are examples of Straumann screw retained abutments that are made specifically for larger restorations. You can see in this particular case, which is going to be a bar retained overdenture, that there are five different kinds of abutments in this mouth. Some of the, the implant angles were tilted in order to take advantage of, of existing bone. In order to create a path of insertion for the bar on the other side of the screen, those angled abutments had to be placed. Then an impression is made of those abutments and transferred to the lab so that they can fabricate the bar. Other abutments include things like overdenture abutments, like locators. These are screwed into the implant, and then uh, the denture is used to pick up the retention part of the locator. There are also temporary abutments that we can use to fabricate long-term provisional restorations. Specifically, if we want to use the provisional restoration to help develop tissue contours. There are two different kinds. There's the prepable peak abutment, which is a, a plastic-like material that's actually prepped and polished, probably best used for cemented provisionals. And then there's the stock abutment. This can be cut to length and then used as a screw-retained provisional. While they both can be screw-retained, it's easier to do a screw-retained provisional restoration with the stock abutment. So I hope that clears up some of the mystery around abutment selection. One of your best resources is your implant rep and your laboratory. Because sometimes it's really difficult to sort through all the hundreds of choices, I've discovered that it's best to go to the source and to talk to people who use them every day and are most familiar with their applications. If you're working with a great laboratory that does a lot of implant retained restorations, um, they can help you choose abutments. And as I said, your implant representative should be well trained to help you do the same thing.